Welcome to Canadream. It's a pleasure having you as our guests. We're going to give you a short overview before you set off, showing how each of the components in your RV works and also provide some helpful tips about driving in North America. After that, you'll be set to have a comfortable and trouble-free vacation. At the end of the video, you'll take our self-guided hands-on tour of your own RV using our how-to guide. If you have any questions once you've completed your self-guided orientation, simply ask one of our knowledgeable guest service agents who will be happy to assist. Your two best friends on your travels will be your how-to guide and the guest guide provided with your RV. The guest guide contains more detailed instructions on the features of your chosen RV. Start the orientation of your RV on the passenger side of the vehicle. Refer to your how-to guide as you go. Note the position of the propane tanks, the fridge vent, the furnace exhaust vent, and the coach battery compartment. There's also a storage compartment here, which has the water hose in it. The entrance to the camper is at the rear. There are fold-down steps to make it easy to get in and out. You'll need to remove the locking pin before you can fold the steps down. Continue around to the driver's side of the camper. The small rear compartment contains the valves to empty your black and gray water tanks. You'll find rubber gloves in this compartment, which you should use when emptying your waste tanks. Also located on the driver's side of the RV is an exterior shower, the city water hookup, the compartment for the electrical hookup, and the freshwater fill hole. The fuel tank for the truck is also on the driver's side. Confirm that all exterior compartments are closed and locked and that the sewer cap is on the sewer outlet and the black and gray sewer valves are closed. The camper is equipped with two propane gas bottles, which supply fuel for the furnace, water heater, stove, and fridge. The bottles are full at pickup and do not need to be refilled prior to your return. If you need to refill your tanks during your vacation, do not fill to more than 80% capacity, as room must be left in the tanks for expansion. We recommend you have only one tank open at a time. Use the switch on the tanks to open the second tank when the first tank is empty and find a propane service to refill or exchange your empty tank. The propane gas system is designed to allow travel with the RV propane gas tank valve open. The gas shutoff valve on the selected bottle must be open for gas appliances in your RV to operate. Before boarding any ferry, however, it is important that the propane gas tank valve is closed. Your RV is fitted with a propane gas detector, which is designed to detect and alert you of possible dangerous gases in the RV. This detector is powered by the coach battery. The detector warns with a fast chirping sound. It is important to note that the detector is sensitive to more than just propane gas. Other combustibles which may be detected include alcohol, colognes, perfumes, and most cleaning fluids. The position of the detector varies according to the make and model of the camper. It is usually located close to the floor. If the propane alarm sounds or you smell gas in the RV, open all doors and step away from the RV. If the alarm continues to sound, please call the number on your Canadream key tag. The black water from the toilet and gray water from the sink is collected in holding tanks under the RV. The level of the tanks is shown at the monitor panel. We recommend dumping the tanks when the tanks are more than half full. Higher tank levels promote complete draining. Only drain your tanks at an approved sani dump location. The sewer hose is stored in the rear bumper of the camper. Remove the waste hose from the storage compartment. Remove the dust cap from the waste pipe outlet and connect the waste hose. Twist to make sure the hose is firmly attached. Place the opposite end of the waste hose at least 15 centimeters, 6 inches, but not more than 30 centimeters, 12 inches, into the sani dump. It may be necessary to prevent the hose from extending past the recommended distance by using a foot, the lid, or possibly a rock to hold it. Always drain the black waste tank first. Pull the handle marked black or the larger of the two handles until it stops. 
Once the black waste has drained, flush the toilet with about 5 to 10 liters, 1 to 2 gallons of fresh water to rinse the black waste tank. Close the black waste tank valve. Pull the handle marked gray or the smaller of the two valve handles until it stops. When the gray tank has completely drained, raise the hose where it is connected to the RV and keep the hose elevated while hand over hand moving towards the opposite end of the hose. This will help you to drain the hose completely. Close the gray water tank valve. Detach and store the sewer hose and replace the cap on the outlet pipe. Add one packet of toilet chemical to the toilet and flush. This process must be repeated every time you drain the waste tanks. Check the monitor panel to ensure your tanks are reading empty. The waste tank sensors can sometimes be compromised by material inside the tank, causing faulty readings on the panel. To prevent this, always flush with plenty of water when using the toilet. Only use RV toilet paper. Never pour grease, oil, coffee grounds, or other food waste down the toilet or sinks. Guests are responsible for costs to repair or empty clogged tanks. Your RV is supplied with a fresh water hose for filling the fresh water tank. The fresh water intake and city water connections can be found on the outside of your RV. To fill the fresh water tank, connect the water hose to a campsite water source. Insert the other end of the hose into the fresh water fill opening. Open the campsite water valve part way and fill the water tank slowly. Once the tank is full, water will start flowing back out of the filler hole. To access the water in the fresh water tank, use the water pump. The water pump switch is on the monitor panel. The water in the fresh water tank is safe for cooking and cleaning. We recommend you use bottled water for drinking. If you have water available at your campsite, you may be able to hook up to the city water supply and avoid using the water in your tank. There is an outside connection for the city water hookup on the side of the RV. A fresh water hose is supplied with the RV, which has connectors on both ends. Attach one end to the city water tap and the other to the city water connector on the side of the RV. Turn the campsite water supply on and check for leaks. The main power switch in your RV, sometimes referred to as the battery disconnect switch, is located just inside the camper door and must remain in the on position for the coach battery to provide power to your RV. The lights inside your RV, along with the furnace fan, will operate off the coach battery when you are not connected to a campground power pole. Your air conditioner, 100 volt power plugs, and microwave require you to be connected to shore power for these to work. The lights on the monitor panel will indicate the approximate condition of the camper battery. To check the condition of the coach battery, you must first disconnect from the campsite power pole and ensure your vehicle engine is off. If the solar controller voltage meter is not reading at least 13 volts, we recommend you recharge the battery by running your RV engine or plugging it into the campsite electricity supply. Connecting your RV to the campsite electricity supply is simple and easy. Remove the RV power cord from the RV. Locate the breaker on the campsite power pole and switch to the off position. Plug the power cord into the campsite power pole, then switch the campsite power pole breaker to the on position. The power cord has a plug for a 30 amp service. If a 30 amp service is not available, use the 15 amp adapter. The 15 amp service will limit the simultaneous use of appliances. Contact campsite staff if there is no breaker located on the campsite power pole and the voltage meter is not reading 13 plus volts. Sit in the driver's seat and adjust the side mirrors so you can see everything outside the vehicle. Become familiar with the controls. Look for the yellow sticker on the dashboard which tells you the height of your RV. Locate the tow haul button. This engages the engine brake when you are driving down steep hills and avoids the overuse of your vehicle brakes. Your RV has an automatic transmission. 
Before you can put the vehicle into gear, you'll need to have your right foot on the brake. This foot will also operate the accelerator pedal, so your left foot can take a complete rest when driving the RV. Head inside the RV and look around. Locate the position of the solar controller, exterior light switches, the monitor panel, and the furnace control. Look for the battery disconnect switch which controls the main power to your RV. This must remain in the on position for the coach battery to provide power to your RV. The coach battery provides power for the interior lights and the furnace fan. Other features such as the microwave, air conditioner, and 110 volt power plugs will only work when connected to shore power. You can check the battery level on the monitor panel. You are required to check your engine oil every time you fill up with fuel. The hood release lever is located on the left side lower interior trim piece near your brake pedal. If oil is needed, the correct oil type is shown on the oil cap. Please purchase the oil and keep your receipt. Canadream will reimburse you up to $100 at the time of your return with a receipt. The fuel tank is located on the driver's side. Please ensure that you only fill the vehicle with the correct fuel. In this vehicle, this will normally be diesel. Look for the diesel only sticker on the fuel cap and fuel door. Please remember to turn off your propane tank before refueling. You may need to restart your fridge when you turn the propane back on. The monitor panel is on the wall by the dinette. It displays the approximate levels in the fresh water tank, black waste tank, and gray waste tank. You can also check the condition of the coach battery and turn the water pump switch on. To check the levels of the fresh water tank, black waste tank, gray waste tank, and battery condition, press and hold the monitor switch. If the tank is full, the E one third, two third, and F indicators will light up on the panel. Readings will work the same for all tank levels. The monitor panel is for convenience only, and the levels shown by the indicators are approximate. The furnace operates using propane and utilizes a fan powered by your coach battery to circulate air throughout the RV. If you plan to run the furnace for an extended period of time, we recommend you be connected to a campsite power pole to avoid draining the coach battery. Turn the furnace on with the on-off switch on the thermostat. Use the lever on the bottom of the manual thermostat by sliding to the center or use the up and down arrows on the digital thermostat to set the temperature. To convert the dinette into a bed, remove the tabletop from the leg by pressing the button at the top of the leg. Remove the table leg by pressing the button at the bottom of the center pole. Position the tabletop between the wooden edges of the dinette seats. Arrange the cushions to form the bed. Your hot water system operates on propane gas. The switch is mounted below the counter near the kitchen sink. Press the water heater switch to on. The switch will light up. The light only stays on if the water heater cannot ignite. Wait for the light to go out. Once the light has gone off, the water heater has turned itself on and is now heating water. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to heat a full hot water tank. If the water is already heated, the light will not illuminate. Ventilation is necessary when operating propane appliances. Open a window or vent and always use the exhaust fan located in the hood above the stovetop. To light the stovetop, holding the portable lighter supplied with the RV in one hand, pull the trigger to produce a flame. 
Position the lighter flame over the burner to be lit. Turn the knob to the light, high position. Then adjust the flame to the desired level. To light the oven, use the portable lighter flame to locate the pilot light at the very back center of the oven. While continuing to hold the flame at the pilot location, turn the oven control knob to pilot. Push and continue to hold. Once the pilot is lit, a small flame is visible at the back center of the oven. Continue to hold the control knob in for an additional 10 to 15 seconds. Release the knob and observe the flame. If after 10 to 15 seconds, it continues to stay lit, then adjust the oven control knob to the desired temperature. If the pilot light does not remain lit, repeat the steps above. Do not close the oven door until the burner is fully lit. It will take 10 to 15 minutes for the oven to reach the desired temperature. The fridge in your Canadream RV runs off propane and automatically switches to run on electricity when the RV is plugged into a 110 volt power source. To operate the fridge, ensure the propane gas valve is open and the battery disconnect switch is on. Press the on-off button located on the panel at the top of the fridge. Press the AC-DC button to select AC. The AC indicator will be lit. Do not select the DC position. Press the auto gas button. The auto indicator will light. Press coldest button to set the temperature. Always ensure you park your RV on level ground. The fridge may not work properly if the RV is not level. There is a small round bubble level in the fridge. If the bubble is inside the black circle on the level, the RV is level. If the RV is not level, move the RV to a more level surface. The camper must be plugged into a campsite power pole for the roof air conditioner to operate. The controls are on the air conditioner which is mounted on the ceiling. Turn the temperature select knob to your desired coolness setting. Turn the AC fan speed knob to the desired setting. Whenever you are reversing, you should always have a person standing at the rear of the RV to guide you. We call this person a spotter. You should be able to see this person in your side mirror and they should be able to see you. They will use hand signals to guide you as you reverse the RV. Many of the damage incidents guests have are caused whilst backing up and these can be avoided if a spotter is used. Thank you for your attention as you learned about the operation of your RV. We appreciate there's a lot to know about your motorhome, particularly if this is your first time in an RV. Information about everything we've covered in this video is available in the guest guide provided with your vehicle. While you are on the road, it's a great resource to refer to for answers to many of the questions you may still have. We wish you an enjoyable and safe vacation. Feel free to share your memories with us on Facebook or Instagram by tagging your photos hashtag MyCanadream.